Hi, I'm Molly, and soon you'll meet some of the people who work behind the scenes in Countdown. A few things to remember if you want to work in TV is there aren't any gimmicks behind the scenes. Programs are made by a hard-working team of trained professionals, not amateurs. The competition for jobs in TV is always fierce, so the more qualifications you have, the better your chances are of scoring a job. It sounds tough, doesn't it? But don't give up. Determination is important, so try again. And from me, good luck. The person responsible for everything the camera sees is the designer. In this case, it's a set for a rock band. It can include costumes, makeup, artwork and special effects for any type of program. I like uh, uh, the scale uh, of the work, uh, the variation, you know, you could be filming, you could be doing light entertainment, you could be doing drama, you could be doing costume designing. Um, you touch on everything. Standing in there, just a pull the bag off it, it's there. Yeah, or if mm. there's a case of some sort and, you know, she rips the front off it and leaves a lot of it sitting inside it or, or a hessian bag just covering well, it all. Just we good. might be able to... The designer, like everyone in a television production, is part of a team. Des uses a sketch to give Walter, the director, a clear idea of what design he has in mind. When the basic look is agreed upon and approved by the director, it's off to the drawing board. Here, on a plan of the studio floor, all the bits of the set are drawn carefully to scale. Sometimes a painstaking task. What uh, are some of the things you don't like about it? Oh, the, pa the paperwork. <laughs> but there's paperwork in everything. You know. These plans and other drawings are made to let everyone know precisely how the set is to be built and placed in the studio. And if you can get that colouring, that'll be fantastic. Mm -hmm. No worries. Okay. Yep. An important part of the job can is to let others in the team know exactly like what well. is required. Can you, can you go this helps you everything go smoothly and on time. A designer has to show he or she has the right artistic ability to get the job. Most designers, however, begin as qualified industrial designers, architectural draftsmen, or quite frequently as interior designers. So, if you're thinking about a career in television design, it helps to be qualified. Well, I started off as a sign writer's apprentice, uh, then went on to, as, uh, to do an, an apprenticeship as a lithographic artist. Uh, we did uh, awnings such as those. Then I went on to be a, a scenic artist at uh, Channel 9 in Melbourne, and I was there for about nine years, and uh, uh, then went from there to Channel 10, uh, where I, as a designer, learning to be a designer from the scenic arts, and uh, did such shows as Showcase, um, Matlock Police, and started Young Talent Time. I think I did that for about four or five years. Uh, and then I came uh, here to uh, Channel 2. Production day and all that planning becomes reality. And is there life beyond television design? Where to from here? Well, I have um, thought of brain surgery, but uh, I think I'll stick here. When the set design is approved and the plans drawn up, a band of skilled craftspeople start to work making the set. Jeremy is a set maker. He helps create concoctions of wood, canvas, plastic, plaster and so on to look like whatever the designer had in mind. We produce stuff called Flovic, which is, um, you see on walls, um, brick walls or weatherboard walls and things like that. They look like brick walls or weatherboard walls, but they're actually plastic sheeting, um, which we produce here. Um, you get to work in the, uh, the studio, putting sets in the studio. Um, you see the other fields of the television industry, as in the lighting people, uh, sound people, things like that. 
get to work with a quite uh, varied range of people. Here, a sheet of cardboard is being cut to look like a slab of metal. It's a specialist job and you need trade qualifications. Well, when I left school, I went straight into an apprenticeship doing engineering pattern making, during which time I did uh, a night school course in engineering drawing as well. Um, and engineering pattern making is a woodwork trade where you're making wooden patterns for um, metal or plastic products. And the pattern is exactly the same as the, the uh, products just in the line of uh, manufacture that you need them. Um, because of the Japanese takeover of the Australian car industry, uh, most of the pattern making in Australia was killed and I was retrenched. I uh, worked for a couple of weeks as a uh, cleaner, contract cleaner, because uh, I didn't really like the idea of sitting on the doll for the rest of my life. And while I was doing that, uh, my brother, who's a staging assistant at the ABC, suggested that I uh, apply for a job as set making, which I did, and I was su successful on my first try. Hey there. Hi, there. Hi, there. Hi, there. Hi, there. We've got... Uh, quite a varied um, degrees of woodworking tradesmen here. We've got uh, carpenters, cabinet makers. I'm the only pattern maker here at the moment, but there have been pattern makers here in the past. But uh, you do have to have a, a trade in uh, some sort of woodworking. You can't just walk off the street and say, hey, I want to be a set maker or a designer. You've got to be qualified for it because there's so many people who want the jobs that they're going to take the person with the most qualifications. Sets are painted by scenic artists called set finishers. An artist like Cam may be called upon to create many kinds of surfaces. It could be a false brick wall, false wood panels, plaster moulding, or in this case, sheets of cardboard put together by Jeremy are getting a rusty metal look. Painting like this requires a flair and wide professional experience, or trade qualifications in painting and decorating. We work with the designers. They, we get the plans directly from them and then discuss with them colour and how the light's going to affect what colour and where, what colour's going to look best in the studio or out on location. It just depends. So we mainly work directly with them. Right. And where to from here? Do you want to remain in making sets or painting sets? Or it's, um, not forever, but at the moment, it, it's, I'm enjoying it because of the, the variety, but I'd like to see what else is opening up in maybe in design or in graphics or something like that. I studied a year at uh, Tertiary College doing graphic design. Left there at the end of that, then I began working at a record company doing artwork, um, poster designs, and various other window displays, travelling around record stores, things like that. Then I uh, was put off from there and was on the dole for a few months, looking around for other jobs of the same type of nature, uh, commercial art studios, that sort of thing. Then I came down, a friend of mine put me on to trying out at television stations, so I looked around and came down here because I knew the ABC was where it is now. And there was no jobs going, but I showed them an art folio. Then a few months later, I found out there was a job going here and came down. They remem remembered me from last time, so I was lucky and got the job. Now I wouldn't leave school until I, had, I was qualified at what I was studying at, because it's a hell of a lot easier if you've got the certificate or your diploma to front up, and because the first question they'll ask you is, is are you qualified at whatever course you were studying? And if you are, well, then you, a lot of your problem is solved. It's after midnight, and the first steps are being taken to transform an empty studio into the set for a countdown production the following morning. The staging department is responsible for setting up the studio to the designer's plan. This not-so-glamorous job is done by staging assistants like Glenn and Ross. I joined the ABC as soon as I left school. I um, applied for a job halfway through my HSC, and it took about six months to get the job. 
I rode into one of the heads of the department up here and um, well, six months later, after a few trials, I got the job. So I guess I was pretty lucky. That was fairly quick as far as I'm concerned. And I was lucky because I came here straight from school. I didn't get my matric, so obviously they didn't need any qualifications that, in that way, I suppose. But it's just lifting anyway. You don't need much to know about lifting. Many people who hold important creative jobs in television started here in staging. It's a fairly low job, but you've got to start somewhere, I guess, but um, you don't get a lot of credit for what you do, and you just go about it quietly and get the job done, and no one says anything to you, but I quite like it, you know. It's a good bunch of guys to work with, and, well... As far as I'm concerned, it's a job in television. That's what I want to do. I mean, I don't want to stay here forever. It's a step, I suppose. Yeah, but it is a start. That's the way I see it. And where would you like to go from here? I would like to go to probably to floor managing. But I'll see what happens after that. It's a, it's a long waiting list. Yeah, I'd like to take the, the standard path of floor managing up through first assistant and then eventually become a producer, but not necessarily in television. Perhaps branch out into film or something one day. But until then, I'll see, see what happens here. A lot, I think a lot of people say, well, they go to tertiary education and they think, well, as soon as they get qualified, then I'll immediately get a job in television production, which is not true at all. So myself personally, I think by working my way up, through the ranks, I may get further than someone who has been all the way to tertiary level. Let's give them a hand. 